The faithful production of crystals is enormously important to science and technology. As crystals are being used in anything from computers and mobile phones to pharmaceutical drugs and, and paints. However, currently we're lacking uh, sufficient control over uh, the type of crystal that is being produced. Uh, and when this goes wrong in an industrial setting, uh, that can be enormously costly. So in our new approach, uh, we have harnessed the fluctuations that occur around the so-called critical point using a laser. So in our experiments, we used a simple mixture of two liquids and a, and a relatively low power laser diodes to s essentially suck one of the liquids out of the mixture. So it's a little bit like, uh, like making a cup of tea, stirring in some milk, and then using a laser to suck the milk out again. It seems really counterintuitive, uh, but it's all within the laws of physics. So we're using mixtures of nitrobenzene and decane, set at a temperature such that they're mixed. The sample is then visualized using fluorescence and phase contrast microscopy, while a laser beam is simultaneously focused on the sample. We find that the component with the higher refractive index, which in this case is nitrobenzene, is drawn into the focus. Here you can see a, a bright spot, uh, which is nitrobenzene that has been uh, drawn in by the laser. And the laser is then switched off and uh, triggers the nucleation of a new phase in a fraction of a second. So you can see that a more clearly defined droplet is formed in seconds, and smaller droplets are pulled into the larger droplet in a process called uh, Oswald ripening. This laser triggered nucleation effect is strongest near the critical point and gradually gets weaker as you move away from it. These are the first steps towards a full understanding of the role that critical concentration fluctuations play in crystal nucleation. Our aim is to gain full control over nucleation, including polymer selection.